Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality is urging its uh, residents to start boiling water before they start using it for drinking or cooking until further notice. This after the municipality's latest test results show a deterioration in water quality. The city has assured residents that it is treating this matter with the utmost urgency and the seriousness it deserves. The current drought facing the city, low dam levels and the fluctuating reservoir levels have been to blame as one of the major contributing factors. An urgent meeting has been called between the water services and environmental health departments to develop a turnaround plan. The municipality has also apologized for any inconvenience caused. Now, the National Institute for Communicable Diseases has dismissed social media posts claiming that typhoid cases have been caused by contaminated municipal water. The Institute says this is false, adding that uh, such posts cause unnecessary panic. It says there's no evidence that the bacteria causing uh, enteric uh, fever uh, has been identified in municipal water sources in the country. We have with us, talk to us now, Dr. Mbuisi Mzukwa. Uh, he is, uh, of course, with the South African Medical Association. Uh, uh, the South African Medical Association is the interim chairperson there. Dr. Mzukwa, good evening and thank you very much uh, for your time. I, I suppose, I mean, the first question would be, if you look at that Nelson Mandela Bay story and what they are reporting there and the boiling of water and so on and so forth, my immediate question that comes to mind, is this how typhoid starts? Uh, good evening, Tavo, and your viewers. Yes, um, if we look at a typhoid, uh, we're looking at a, a cluster of symptoms that are, called, are caused by a, a bacteria called Salmonella typhi. And this comes about as a result of uh, contaminated water uh, or contaminated food. So very important that uh, we understand uh, the, the sources of this. Uh, but you must understand that also there are other factors, like, for example, the climate change, you know, all the floodings and everything that happens, and also um, other social factors as well, like, you know, those um, uh, poor conditions that our people find themselves living in. So those are all contributing to um, what we see now. But also, you know, uh, there's a challenge in terms of inspection of... Um, some uh, areas like your restaurants, uh, you know, where food is prepared in bulk and, and, and stuff like that. So those are very important things that must be considered when you're looking for a source of infection. Yeah. If contaminated water is not the source, you're saying uh, also food and where it's prepared uh, could, could be a, a, a source of, of where these uh, uh, cluster outbreaks uh, could be originating. I and mean, if you look at the Western Cape and the Northwest, do we have any information at this particular point as to what is the source of, of these cluster uh, 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 of typhoid fever uh, reported there? Well, we have no uh, official information at the moment, uh, except that uh, we were informed that uh, there's an investigation that is going on there, you know, to determine the source of the infection and making sure that, uh, you know, there, there are measures that are put in place so that uh, there's prevention of the spread of that infection in, in those areas. But you must understand that uh, uh, this is a, an endemic infection. It's, it's, it has always been with us for a long time, just that when there are issues, you know, like your, you know, a contamination, you know, it tends to um, cause lots of problems, and it's a public health uh, crisis. Uh, at, 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 at a certain extent, because um, you do have children who are vulnerable, who might catch this and uh, um, uh, obviously admitted uh, to get dehydrated and, and cause problems for, for the, the, the public health. Yeah. Is, is typhoid a notifiable disease? And if so, what, what does that mean? Yes, it is a notifiable disease. It means that if a doctor or a healthcare professional attends to a patient and uh, uh, um, suspects that this patient, uh, the symptoms that are displayed by this patient might be caused by typhoid, then the expectation is that you, you then uh, fill in a form uh, notifying uh, 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 the, the NICD that there is such a, 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 
uh, an, an issue or you suspecting this, but you diagnose it first by taking whatever uh, stools to the lab. Once it's identified, then you report. Uh, it, you must find it first, diagnose it first. Uh, but in most cases, you'll be alerted to by the number of cases that you see, you know, you know, coming in your practice or coming in the institution, you know, presenting with the same uh, symptoms like diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal pain, fever, you know, people becoming lethargic, loss of energy, whatever the case is. How similar, though, are these uh, particular symptoms to the COVID symptoms and how, how, how easy is it to confuse the two? Yes, the, the symptoms uh, that are displayed by typhoid are not really typical. Uh, they can easily be confused with other uh, conditions. That is why you've got to make to test, um, especially if you see that you know, the numbers are going down in terms of COVID. Uh, you, you've got to think about other, other infections because COVID is not the only infection we have in, in this world. There are other infections. There's, there's TB, there's everything else. So uh, uh, thinking laterally, you know, should be thinking broadly in terms of what could be the cause, taking into consideration the context, you know, where is this patient coming from, the community from where this patient is, where is this patient working at? You know, all these things you need to, this, did this patient, uh, for example, uh, eat in a restaurant? Did this patient attend a function? These are the questions that you've got to ask as a practitioner. Yeah. How have we, and as you mentioned, that it's, it's endemic in, in, in South Africa and maybe in, in other parts of the world as well. How have we controlled it uh, up until this point and uh, uh, how do we deal with it? How do we treat it uh, even now as it is emerging again? The most important thing is to look at our hygiene uh, standards uh, in terms of how we deal with the water. You know, I always advise that uh, if, you, if you are going to drink water, whether that water is coming from a tap, whatever, you need to boil that water before you drink it. Um, because you, you, are, you are now assured that that water is clean. You, you will never be sure if the water is clean only because it's coming from a tap. So very important that we, we make sure we do that thing. But also coming to food hygiene, it's very important that if you are going to be uh, eating fruit, uh, don't think it's ready, let me just consume. Make sure that that fruit is, is you, you wash it. Even if it is wrapped in a clean plastic from whatever uh, shop you, you, you're buying it from, but make sure that you, are, uh, uh, you wash that before you eat, very important. So also the municipality must look at what are the issues that are contaminating our water. You know, because if you find, for example, uh, in the municipalities, in, in some towns, for example, you find there's uh, 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 sewage running in the streets, that sewage is going to the uh, 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 rivers and stuff like that, and ultimately it lands itself in the, in the dams that we drink. Yeah. How serious a case, uh, or serious, uh, how big a deal is it, shall I say? I mean, you've already mentioned its impact, for example, on children and their effects uh, uh, on them as far as dehydration and so on and so forth. Is it as dangerous in, in, in the adult population? Well, if it, if it lends itself to a vulnerable person, a person with underlying medical conditions, you know, those people are, 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 are at a risk of, you know, complications. For example, dehydration leading to kidney failure and all these other things. So it's very important that if uh, you, you get a person who is uh, symptomatic, you know, and, you know, those uh, homemade things have been tried, you, you need to attend to a clinic and see a doctor as soon as, as possible or a healthcare practitioner, not necessarily only a doctor. So I think it's very important that we become vigilant as societies in terms of this uh, uh, endemic uh, infection. Yeah, for example, to the people in uh, Nelson Mandela Bay, there's been a warning that has been issued around the consumption of water, that it must be boiled and so on and so forth. Uh, we don't want to cause panic, but uh, I suppose in the areas where typhoid now has been uh, reported, what actions should households be taking to ensure the quality of the water that they're consuming? Like I said, uh, um, um, Tabo, the important thing is that when you, if, if that water is, you are going to drink that water, 
make sure whether it's coming from a tap, uh, make sure that that water you boil before you use it. For example, in my own home, we don't buy water because we don't know how that water is prepared. It might be in a shiny plastic, but we don't know who was preparing it, whether they were maintaining the good uh, uh, standards of hygiene. So when what we do here, we prepare, we, we boil water and put it in the fridge. Um, uh, that, that's how we do it, so that we are assured of the quality of water that we are drinking. So I would encourage you know, communities to do the same thing. Boil the water before you consume it, even if it's, it's a municipality water, but also the food around you. Make sure that there's good food uh, 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 hygiene. You know, the fruit is taken good care of. When you're uh, going to be consuming vegetables, make, it, make sure that those vegetables are clean. Uh, they, they, they get washed, they're, they're boiled and stuff like that before you consume them. Dr. Vries, I appreciate your time and thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, tonight. South Africa's Medical Association Interim Chairperson, Dr. Vries Zuko.